And when it was bone as part of multi-system disease, half the patients reactivated in other bones and the incidence of diabetes insipidus of course was more than 25% and you heard Dr. Whitlock 40% this morning so somewhere in that range. So single bone you can generally be very reassuring. Multifocal bone usually you treat and watch carefully. Bone as part of multi-system disease obviously gets treated anyway but there is a high reactivation rate. Um, what you, can you use to treat many things um, will cure a, a lesion. So there are many, many ways of curing an LCH bone lesion. Um, biopsy alone may do it. A cura curatage, which is just taking out the center of the lesion. Um, you can do it giving, putting steroid directly into the bone. Uh, Indesid, indomethacin, um, chemotherapy for sure, low-dose radiation, all will work but do you need them? Most single bone biopsy and curatage is the only therapy that's needed. Now, whether you need to treat a special site bone um, in the front of the face, the temporal bone, is, a, is, a, is an area that is a little bit controversial. There is some contention about it. The Histocyte Society have felt because of the risk that this is the risk area for diabetes insipidus, that we would treat them it would treat for six months on what is in fact very non-toxic type of chemotherapy and then see if indeed you can reduce um, the diabetes insipidus rate. There have been a lot of discussion about that from other groups that have suggested that if it's the first and single and you biopsy it and cure it, maybe it doesn't come back anyway and therefore why you know, so, so it's, it's a big discussion, but it is very low dose and non toxic therapy. And I think what we have felt is that if it is a bone with a big intra component going into the brain, you know, towards the brain, that that probably would benefit from chemotherapy. But time will tell who's right about that. But any other area, single lesion, you don't need to do anything else and certainly you don't need to do extensive surgery and this is a lesson I can assure you that most neurosurgeons do not know rather than do know. Neurosurgeons in the big centers know it. You do not have to do a wide excision. This is not a malignant disease. It will heal with just taking out the center of the bone and all you do by doing the wide surgery is you're making a bigger hole you know to and then you have to put patches in and all sorts of things. So it's a lesson that we need need to teach all of us to, to people, but, but they're learning the lesson um, in most centers now. But you don't need to do extensive surgery for single bone, and most single lesions do, do fine. Multifocal bone, because of the higher reactivation rate and DR rate, we usually do give chemotherapy too. And um, as Dr. Whitlock said, there is a study that's open, and the study will be interesting to see if six months of chemotherapy is enough to stop reactivations. Um, I'll, I'll come back to that in a, in a second. Um, it may be that we have to do another study after that. Anyway, non-steroidals will, will, does work, but we, and the bisphosphonates do work as well. Dr. Ethel spoke about pomidronate this morning. What we don't know is if that has any effect in preventing DI or CNS disease. So basically, this is a disease where you know some lesions can get better, others can get worse, all at the same time. You can maybe have a single lesion that you just curate the center, it's, and maybe there's an inflammatory reaction that gets better. So why do you treat it? Why do we treat L bone LCH at all? Well, we really treat for two reasons. The first is to treat the acute problem. So usually there's pain. Um, and there's a mass, and sometimes that mass is compressing something. Um, so we usually do treat to treat the acute problem. But we also are giving treatment now to try and prevent these late effects. And um, this, are, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because Dr. Minkoff is going to be talking about this, but this whole problem of that some of the kids will come back many times and have this chronic reactivating bone disease and those are the ones who tend to really have the high risk of these permanent consequences which again I'm not going to discuss in detail you've, you've heard a little bit about it this morning diabetes insipidus is the commonest but by no means the only one and one of the reasons you want to treat is to try and prevent this 
from happening because these are the late effects that are really going to affect the quality of life of the patient. And can we do that? Does treatment actually prevent it? And that, as you heard this morning, we are not sure. But one of the feelings is now. So maybe the, the treating multifocal bone um, and uh, for six months may prevent some of the reactivations, uh, maybe not. We'll see at the end of the trial. But what about the child who's already reactivated at least once, maybe twice? What are we doing with them? And the feeling is growing that m this has got to be thought about as a chronic long-term thing that maybe needs low-risk long-term therapy. And each one of us, I think, now have a couple of patients, but it's only a small number of patients that we've treated for a prolonged period of time with low dose, just say oral chemotherapy, like 6MP and oral methotrexate. Believe me, the patients that I've had done this to who have reactivated a couple of times are much better on therapy than they ever were off therapy, and the parents don't want to stop at the end of the 24 months. It's not me, because they really are from these children that every Every six months or whatever it is, we're getting the disease back to being completely free of disease, and it's really very low toxicity. We do check the blood count. You have to watch that. We do watch liver functions, but there's no, we don't know really of many long-term effects at all from this. They really are happier on this. Now, I have a few children now who were reactivating regularly that after the two years have not at least yet reactivated again. And neither of them have actually gotten diabetes insipidus. But what do you can you tell from two patients, you know? And um, but colleagues have also got their two or three as well. Is it gonna work for everybody? I'm sure not but it may work for some. So we need to do a study, and this is the theory that this chronic low-grade form of disease may need chronic low-dose therapy. To do the study, we need the number of patients. And the statisticians have said, with the patients currently being registered on the Histocyte Society studies, it would take 20 years to do the study. I mean, I'll be long gone before that ever happens. So what we need is all the U.S. and Canadian patients to be put on the study the way most of the European patients are, and maybe then we have enough patients to answer some of these extremely important questions. So we all have a duty and a job to do here and make sure that people are not just using the protocol to treat the patient, but actually registering the patient and then using the protocol so you can get the data and maybe we can answer some of these really important questions. Um, anyway, so to summarize the bone LCH, the commonest system in children with LCH and skull is the commonest site. Mostly it's single and the majority will do well with very simple therapy and in fact they should not be over treated. Multifocal bone, I think, does need therapy. For how long? We're not yet sure, but, but there is a 25% reactivation. Even higher if your bone is part of multi-system disease and if it becomes chronic, there's a significant risk of permanent consequences of which DI is the commonest but by no means the only. And we need the trials to see if we can stop the process. Thank you very much.